Hey everybody, it's Kelly and I am going to do something a little bit special for you tonight. I have a um, retreat layout chair for you. So I was at a scrapbook retreat. Oh. Sorry guys, had to mute that. So I was at a um, scrapbook retreat over the weekend and thought I'd hop on and do a layout share. For one thing, this is quicker and easier for me to upload than it is if um, I actually do it as a, oh, what am I, if I do it as a, um, a regular upload. So anyway, so a couple of things to talk about first of all. This is how I store my layouts as I finish them. I just take one of my regular albums. These are a Hobby Lobby album. And I bring extra page protectors because they only come with 10, which is 20 layouts. This time, I managed to do 70 layouts. Um, usually, I'm in the high 50s for uh, layouts. So I thought that was really interesting that um, I actually did 70 layouts, guys. That's crazy. Anyway, so the big question for me always that people ask me when they do this is, do I make kits? Hey, Renee, good to see you. So the question, do I make kits? And the answer is no, no, and no. So what I do is I take my um, paper, and you can actually see this. I did uh, last week as I was packing, I did a, um, I did a, video in the scrapbook you can see it in scrapbook the scrap, scrapbook retreat playlist or also in the scrapbook organization um, playlist but it shows you what i packed so i take things like paper and um all of my embellishments all that kind of stuff kind of in the way that i would store them normally so that it feels to me like i'm scrapping in my scrapbook room i think that makes me way more productive so Hi, Barbara, Kelly, and Cynthia. And I think I talked about that in that video, that that's what I want to do is I want to feel as much like I'm in my at-home scrapbook room as I absolutely can. So that's why I'm able to do this. Now, I did go out for probably about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours on Saturday. So I didn't scrap during that time, but otherwise I completed the, um, and I do stay up very late. Like I was up until one or um, about one o'clock the three nights. I'm kind of a night owl most anyway, not during work hours or not during work, you know, the work week. But on weekends, I can be up late. So that is one thing. But I also didn't get up until like 8 or 9 as well, too. So we start about 1 o'clock on Thursday where we can enter the house. We can leave by, we have to be out by 3 o'clock on um, Sunday. I stopped scrapping about 12.30 today. So my scrapbooking probably went from about 2 or 2.30 to about 12.30 today you know, with breaks for meals and that kind of stuff. But I don't do a lot of chit-chatty and that kind of stuff. So, um, that kind of stuff. So, oh, awesome. Glenda says she's made 40 layouts so far. That's pretty cool. So, anyway, I, I certainly chat with all my friends. This is a smaller retreat, so it's really easy. There were only seven of us, so we all are in one room. We can sit and chat. It's, it's really easy to do it that way. But I don't have, like, a lot of downtime now sometimes I do um, it's just that you know I've put a stash freeze on and oh my gosh you guys I really noticed how much stuff I was using up I mean package and packages of embellishments uh, especially because I was using a lot of try to use these um, Ellie studio acrylic words but you know also you know enamel dots and I was focused on what I had with me. The only thing that I did not actually use that I brought were my stamps. So those are coming off of my packing list because I just don't do it. So that's it. If you have questions, you know, just put them up while I'm doing this. I'm going to go through these layouts, but maybe I don't know that I'll be able to tell you specific papers and that kind of stuff. The other thing is, is that I was, um, doing the Calvin Ball challenge as well that I've talked about before. It's on Facebook. It's a Calvin Ball 2020 group. And at the end, I think I started out with about 150 points or so. I'm up over a thousand because of this weekend. Now that I'm going to, if you're doing Calvin Ball, 
Um, uh, now that's going to come to a, an abrupt halt. You know, I'm hoping tomorrow just for fun that I'll be on the leaderboard, but we'll see. Anyway, so let's get started. So one of the big things I wanted to do was get my youngest grandson's newborn photos scrapbooked, and I did. He was born um, uh, in uh, June of last year, at the end of June of last year. So this is him. Um, this is, I know this is paper that's available at Joann's and little embellishments from different things. And hopefully um, this is easy for you guys to see. Okay, looks like my connection is freezing. Hopefully yours is not. Okay. I'm going to go back through here, guys. Hold on just a second. I'm going to delete this one and bring it back up. So I can see what's going on. Okay, glad to hear that, um, Renee. For some reason, mine mine froze. So okay, I'm back now. My internet connection can be a little wonky. Anyway, so I'm hoping that you can see. Let me even move this a little bit. There we go, because that's better. Okay. So again, more paper. Lots of um, puffy hearts and stars. I have so much of that in Ellie Studio, so I'm trying to do that. I do take my paper. I do. Um, my pattern paper and my pattern paper envelopes. This is a little, sorry guys, this is wanting to, to uh, come apart here. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is so I can take these apart. Anyway, take my pattern papers and my pattern paper envelopes, cardstock in another one, and then faux solids in different envelopes so that I have them all separated so I can work with this. So lots of Ellie Studio here. Um, I know this is a color book pad. Used a lot of washi tape or tried to use a lot of washi tape on these. So thanks, you guys. He is pretty darn adorable, I do have to say. And I just, it, looking at these, I can't believe how tiny it is. He is. Okay, so um, here, I didn't use a lot of my flare. I think this might be the only layout I used flare on. It just, I was trying so hard to use up the puffy stuff that I didn't do as much of that. The other thing is, is like all my supplies for this, the baby layouts, I have an envelope for girls and an envelope for boys. They're all in one place. So it's really easy for me to pull that stuff. And I think if you stick to like a manufacturer or a theme and do everything you have for those, like let's say you want to do your Christmas, just grab your Christmas supplies and then scrapbook those for a while and then I'll put it away. So that's kind of how I did this. And you'll see that even more as I move on. So I love this one too. This this wood grain paper, this is a cute collection by I think Echo Park if I remember correctly, but this is a couple years old. Those baby feet and hands. Okay, so that's that one. Yeah. Sorry guys, let's see, there we go better. Um, the other thing is, is I don't know if there's going to be any more boys. My niece is pregnant with a girl, so we'll see. I do still have boy supplies left, but who knows if they're um, done having kids, and I have another nephew that might have kids eventually, so I'm going to hang on to my boy supplies. So, love these. Again, this is, um, this is a collection, maybe by Webster's Pages, I think. I can't remember some. I think these are pebbles, and I, I love kind of like putting these on, like a couple uh, I can't think of words today. <laughs> Must be tired. Anyway, um, can't. Um, I like putting like two or more photos so you can see sort of some set of progression of them. So more puffies. Again, lots of puffies. Trying to get die cuts in there. Um, clouds were a theme for the Calvin Ball. So I decided to do that. I'm actually surprised you guys that there's not more shine. This was really fun because I looked at these and I love these photos of him, but I didn't have anything in the rust colors. And then, so I was an interior design major. I've said that before. I'm like, oh, I need to go opposite on the color wheel. That's orange. You put blue with it and yay, look at this. So this is actually for me a two page layout, even though it doesn't look like it. I probably could flip these pages when I put them in the album, but when I made them, I made them like this. That's, I did that on purpose. So, but you know, two pages, but not repeating the exact same page. I do that a lot where I don't necessarily mirror pages just because I don't always have the same number of photographs to go um, page by page. And this was dictated by, he's looking to the left here and to the right here. So that's a little hint for you guys when you're doing layouts, you want 
them to look into a page, not out of the page, because otherwise your eye doesn't see it right and it's uncomfortable. Here's another two-pager. Now this one, I did mirror the paper from side to side, but after that, then I did something a little bit different. This is one of my favorite Bella Boulevard papers. I love that black and white stripe. I used to use a ton of it. I haven't used as much of it lately. And more puffies, and I think there's some chipboard here. I tried to use a lot of these Ellie Studio fray stickers as well, too, on these, but kind of simple. Um, the photos are so bold here that I thought that that would be kind of a fun treatment. And here's one of those acrylic words that you're going to start to see popping in here and there. Um, this is a really old Bella Boulevard paper. I was so excited to get that on the layout. And that happened a couple of times where I used some really old product, which was really awesome. This is a baby collection as well, too. I can't remember. But my baby collections are usually a couple of years old as well, just so that you know that. Um, this is where I grabbed, like, my blue. I knew I wanted to do these pictures of them. And I um, just grabbed like my blue faux solids and that's how I put this together is just kept using blue and blue and blue, some phrase stickers in blue. So I grabbed my blue and then I grabbed my baby stuff. And this actually isn't baby stuff. It's just, you know, from my regular stash and lots of puffy stickers. So this will be the season of puffies. And yes, Renee, using up old stuff is so satisfying. I can't believe how much fun I'm having not buying stuff, honestly. As a matter of fact, I tried to buy work. Um, vellum at Hobby Lobby because I think I only had like a sheet left. I ended up not using any at all. Um, and they were totally out of the 12 by 12 vellum. And I walked out without looking at anything else. I'm so proud of myself. I just thought I have plenty in my car. I don't need any more stuff, even though I love it. And if you're at a point where you want to buy, go ahead. I certainly did for a long time. It's just that I'm starting to outgrow my space and I don't want to make my space any bigger. But boy, it made a huge difference in um, some of the types of paper that um, I'm storing, the, the stash busting. This is a precious, precious layouts to me. I love these pictures. I love this one specifically where he's given him a kiss. Um, and again, these are not baby papers. These are from a baby boy sticker sheet from, I think, Doodlebug. But, you know, not that. Again, here, th there's nothing baby oriented on this at all. So if you don't, you don't have to use your stash to be themed either when you do that. And I think this looks very boyish. It looks very babyish. Um, these are, these papers here, not this one, but these are, and this one too, are all Creative Memories papers. The crop that, or the retreat that I went to is hosted by a Creative Memories, um, I can't remember what they're called. Oh, thanks, Glenda. Yep, I think it looks okay on my side, too. Anyway, um, there um, she's hosted. It's a creative memories, a person who sells creative memories. but And she does bring product, but she doesn't push it at all, although she, she knows how much I'm always looking for blue papers. And she brought two blue collections for me. Actually, three, but I already had a lot of one that I haven't used yet. It was this one. And so I did, I did, thank you, consultant. I did get two envelopes of blue to um, collections of Creative Memories paper, and I used more than half of what I bought already just because I was scrapping so many baby things. So thank you for the word consultant, Renee. I think I'm gonna, when I'm all done, I'm gonna take a shower and go have a glass of wine because I obviously need to relax. Part of it has been this weekend has been a little stunning. You guys know I'm a massage therapist. So I am a healthcare worker and trying to wrap my head around um, what this whole coronavirus means to precautions I need to start taking, but no cancellations from clients yet. So that's um, really good. And as a healthcare worker, you take precautions every day. It's just how can I step it up to keep people safe? Anyway, so um, this is also from the photo shoot, and this is my oldest grandson. So the reason there's a monkey on here is his nursery was monkey themed, and I often think of him as a monkey, even though his the next grandson in line, so M number two is we like to call them because they're all M's. Um, M number two, I used to call monkey, but I think of him as for I think of him with monkey as well because of his um, his nursery. So this is baby themed, but this is from a dinosaur collection. So all this is baby themed, but this is dinosaur collection. So there you go. None of those papers baby themed. Okay, obviously I've got a little baby themed stuff here, and I'm looking at you know using things up, trying to not um, 
not buy more. This is an interesting, this is a piece of paper I've had in my stash forever. I've always liked it, but it was so dark. And when I went to go to my browns, because I thought I would pull out some browns with this, I didn't have, this was the only dark brown I had. And I'm like, well, maybe I should wait and go like to Hobby Lobby, which was close, and get some brown paper so I don't have any dark browns. And I thought, no, make something work. And that's what I did. And I love the way the layout looks. I think this is just a, it's a stretch. Lots of enamel dots too. There's a down, enamel, enamel dots here as well. That was one of the things I was trying to use some up. Because you guys have seen my basket of enamel dots. I have enamel dots for the rest of my life. More baby layouts with one of the grandmas. Um, this is a baby paper. These are not and then baby embellishments and trying again to make things work like I don't know that I would have necessarily put this elephant on here but it is kind of baby um, themed so it's just it's kind of fun to be able to do that hey thanks Renee yeah it was fun it, it's fun it, I think this whole stash thing is making me be making me be more creative and think out of a box, which I love. What a cool challenge for us. Now, again, if you're not in that place, buy, 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 because there's so many great um, collections out there, and I we need to support the manufacturers, right? And now, because you know many of us can't go out or shouldn't be going out, they'll ship it to your door. <laughs> anyway, so now we're transitioning out of the baby layouts. This is the last one I did from his more newborn phase. Um, this is an, and so then I found this fun summer picture and I was just, I was tired of scrapbooking baby stuff. So I wanted to just totally switch it up, found this photo that I wanted to get scrapped of summer and um, there's a lot of pebbles in here and a couple of other mixed collections. You'll see some puffy stickers, there's some citrus fruit on here because that was part of the Calvin Ball, um, that butterfly. So again, it's another way to help me think of different ways to use things or to go look and say oh there's a butterfly on this can I use this on this or those kinds of things here's a double page layout and you guys see although you've seen this before this is how my double pages are stored I don't mind that there's a gap here as a matter of fact I think that's really forgiving a lot of times because a lot of times these measurements don't exactly line up but if they're sitting like this you don't know that versus if they were I know you can um, Shamel at one time talked about um, stitching these together, but because I'm always moving my layouts around until mm, usually it takes me at least a year past the year, like I'm probably not going to finish 2019 until maybe even until 2021. But um, I don't, I'm not going to go back and um, stitch these together. They're fine. So these are my cats. This is Linus and Lucy. And my kitty sitter took uh, pictures of them. So when I'm gone for more than just a day or two, then I usually have somebody come in just to make sure everything is okay. Plus she can just check on the house too. So, and this girl is sassy and she doesn't like her picture taken. So I told her it was brilliant that she got that. And this is a cat line um, that I bought a while ago. Here's another double page layout. This is, um... Hey, Maxine, nice to join. Thanks nice. Thanks for joining me and us, actually. So this layout, as I was starting to say, is one of my favorites that I did for the um, retreat. It is um, a, I'm just going to move this just a little bit. It's of a run that my sister and brother-in-law and I did together in February, and it was cold. It was zero degrees out, and it was called Cocoa Classic, so it was kind of fun. I knew I had lots of cocoa embellishments, so I was really able to use those cocoa embellishments up, and then um, also snowflakes, and then there, I, I don't know that you guys are going to be able to pick up on this, but there's some like white snowflakes here. It's, it's hard to see. I think it's better. You can see it here better. There we go. So I used, these are all Heidi Swap, and I used a boatload of these up. I think I have just a couple left um, because I really tried to use all the smaller ones. So that's fun. Again, I was really trying to use things up. These are actually paper clips that um, you, that you, um, normally from from I'm trying to create paper that you would normally have to put a paper clip on I took my button shank remover and took the paper clip off of them and that way then I just put them on this way because I tried to use those as paper clips forever and I haven't so all right well good morning Maxine that's pretty awesome 
Maxine is in Australia, you guys. Pretty cool. Here's um, another two-page layout that I did of my grandsons from the summer. We went to a really special garden close to us. Um, and I just even, so this is a cool thing. I am not above using flowers or pink on boy layouts, depending on what's going on. You can definitely tell that with this, um, this layout as well. You know that I don't do that. And there'll be some flowers coming up later in some of my great nephew's layouts. So again, using some of those acrylic words, one of the ways that I was thinking out of the box is that one of the things on our Calvin Ball list was circles. So I used these number circles, which were from actually a, um, a Christmas kit, a December document kit from LA Studio, but I used them here as a day. So, you know, it would be like day seven or whatever. So I happen to have the, um, dates available. So again, just thinking out of the box. I love the way this silly layout turned out. Um, this was after that cocoa run. We went to a really awesome restaurant for brunch and I had eggs and I have this paper pad with food papers in it and I found this and then this is just a paper that um, I don't think it was in that. I think I found it somewhere else. Oh, yeah, no. It was in, this is a Creative Memories paper, and I just went to my yellow papers, grabbed that, and went, ooh, how cool is that? Found this one, and lo and behold, there's a whole bunch of um, papers together. Little hard to see at this distance, but I inked them, and that's a way that I have three different vendors right here. So Doodlebug, this is a paper pad from somebody in Creative Memories. I inked the edges of all of those to bring um them all together and I did the same thing with all the LA Studio embellishments. So remember that that you can do that to bring different manufacturers together. Um, this is a lot of an Echo Park uh, dinosaur collection here. God bless my stepson there with all four kids. So two in the stroller, one on his sh shoulders and the other one walking. Um, what's inspired this is I found this dad life card and I'm like, okay, he posts that hashtag all the time. I'm going to have to go find a photo that I can use with this, found this layouts born perfectly. So isn't it cool how we can also be inspired by different things to scrapbook as well? Not just always by the photo. It was inspired by that card. All right. Same collection here, but not again, I'm not telling a dinosaur, um, story. There are eggs up here, dinosaur eggs, but you wouldn't know that because it's not a dinosaur collection. The other thing that I'm loving about this is, is I'm starting to use frames more. I used to get, I don't know, frames were used to be kryptonite for me. They're still a little hard because I always want to put either a photo in them or a piece of paper so that I can journal on it, but I've started to use them like this. You'll see how I'm using them as almost foundations for embellishment clusters in a couple of other spots. One more for sure that I remember. This one was a layout of my granddaughter who, um, from about, I don't know, little, not quite a year ago, but this is a really darling princess collection that I have not put on a page yet. So I bought it with her in mind because I was so excited to have a granddaughter. So here's a an unused collection that I finally actually used. It's very princess themed in the embellishments. So I think that's part of why I've been steering away from it. But obviously the papers are not really at all. This is not that, but these, this and this, um, and that is actually part of the collection. All right. Um, then I started, um, now I'm just scrapbooking. I have so many envelopes of photos of my grandkids that I really did a lot of scrapbooking about them this time. This is Chamel. Um, I think everything here is. Yep, everything here is Chamel. Um, and this is uh, a line of books because they're at that two-page layout that said Bookworm Gardens. The pictures were taken there. So these will go together, but I liked just bringing that book theme back together here. And um, Ah, cool, Kelly. Kelly's using the Princess Collection from Echo Park for Scrapbook, her daughter. I've seen Chamel doing lots of clusters of big pieces like this lately, so I was inspired to do that and then move the title over a little bit. That's a lot of words for me. Normally, that's not something that I would automatically do or even think about doing, but I really love the way this looks. So I don't know that I want to do that all the time, but it just felt appropriate on this really bright, happy page. This is a 
a Chamel paper that I've loved forever and well not forever it's not that old but since the collection came out I don't remember which collection this is you know I'm really usually pretty good about that stuff for you guys but when you're making 70 layouts in a weekend you don't worry about who the manufacturers are or what collections it, it is um, so it's a lot of Chamel here but I am mixing in a little bit of um, some, I just thought uh, um, some Ellie Studio here, but lots and lots of Chamel and um, just pulling from all sorts of, of her different collections to get things done. And, you know, there's a bird here. Well, there's no bird on this layout, but they're outdoors. So I figured it worked. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here. Um, here's one of me driving the minivan for the first time because now that three grandkids go with me, I can't get the car seats in my vehicle. So they, um, I, this is me taking the first time. And my granddaughter's actually behind me. You can't see her there. And I was in the driveway. I had not pulled out yet, just to be clear. So using um, Chamel here, this was a four by six cut apart that I just cut out the speech bubble part and used it to journal. Um, the, these doodle pops here I've been waiting to use forever. I bought these to go with the Glitter Girl collection and hadn't used them yet. So I was really excited to get those on the page. And I used everything in the little doodle pop sheet so that I didn't have anything left over again because I'm trying to use some stuff up. These, All these enamel dots or sequins here are from a, a partially used package of... Um, of... embellishments that... I just grabbed it and said, okay, I need to use these up on one of my layouts. So, yes, yay for empty packages is right. Another one of those Ellie Studio um, words. I wasn't sure that I love this layout. I'm still kind of neutral about it. I don't hate it. When I first finished it, I'm like, ugh, not my favorite layout. I think, though, and I think it's so, that background paper is so incredibly busy, and this block but I needed, you needed to be able to see the buildings or you wouldn't understand what they were, right? So I tried to do that. First I did the pink block and then I did the darker line around it to help really pop it off the page even more. So that's kind of a little tip for you guys with really busy paper. Mat your photos on something really dark. And if I had not done the pink, it probably would have stood out even more. But then that navy really is not in this paper. There's black in the lines of the building, but which is fine. It's just that's a little tip there. Um, and then I I remembered I had washi tape from Schmel with the buildings, these buildings on it. So I grabbed it. That was not my favorite addition to this, but I think it actually in the end it worked out okay because it was a place to anchor the title. Otherwise, it probably would have ended up there. But in the end, um, you know, they can't all be our favorites, right? But I think this is um, one of these great, you know, it's just, it's great to have it done. Lane Amon always used to say when she was doing the Scrap Happy blog and when she would do um, some of her monthly challenges, better done than none. And that's kind of how I feel about this. I like it, not my favorite, but it's okay. Um, here is something brand new. I think I told you guys that I bought a little bit of Chamel and a little bit of Maggie Holmes. That's what this is. I bought this transparency because I was in love with it. So I kept those papers out aside and I used them and used them. Um, it's from her new uh, collection. And then that's where these flowers are. Some of these flowers are from too. And look at that, a dandelion. When I found that, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is their backyard. Backyards have dandelions where I live. So that's pretty cool. All right, um, more Chamel over here. This was a ruler paper that I really liked the other side of it, and that's really why I bought it. But I have these wood rulers from Chamel that I think are from her first or second collection, and I have I, I've used like almost none of them, or up until recently I'd used almost none of them. But now that I'm doing the stash dive, I'm really trying to use them up. And so I found these that are a little bit more neutral more neutral to tell this very funny story. He is wearing a diaper here. When um, his baby brother was born, they stayed with grandpa. And I think grandpa was a little overwhelmed it, and he takes care of them all the time. But I think there wasn't a lot of sleeping that night or something. And so they went out to the car to go back to um, their house to meet their baby brother. He's Grandpa strapped him in, not my husband, Grandpa, the other Grandpa, um, or my ex-husband, I should say. Um, grandpa strapped him in, and as he's doing it, he said, Grandpa, where are my pants? 
<laughs> so, you know, trusted to a three-year-old three to be so chill. He didn't really care about the fact that he wasn't wearing pants. Actually, these, you know, you know, little kids, uh, oftentimes they love to run around with nothing on at all, right? So anyway, I love this story. And um, Grandpa is fantastic because he sends me pictures of stuff that he does with the kids all the time or that the kids are doing. Um, he just texts them to me. So that's really awesome awesome that you know he's doing that so lots of chamel on this page though and yay for getting rid of those rulers i think i just have two or three of the smaller ones left now i'll have to look because they sit in that pile of stuff to my left hand that i try to use up um that little boy that you just saw did this not that long ago he likes to get up early and nobody else in the house does so the first thing he did was he used the paint to paint here and it's like you know an inch thick here because he just put it on there and and then apparently that wasn't enough he decided the hallway needed paint too fortunately this was washable and then i actually picked the kids up that day to go do something and one of the things he said when we got in the car was grandma paint only goes on paper and i was like you are right i didn't call him number two i used his name but i'm like you are right because and i said how do you know that and he said paint was on the wall <laughs> so anyway it was funny um it's funny now it'll be funny in their albums not so funny at the time for mama and dad i'm sure and i'm seeing that i have a loose little piece here so i'm just gonna get that on there so, all right. So this is um, this is one of the color book kind of watercolory collections that was up for a while, and some Michael's embellishments, puffy embellishments. Little Fourth of July here. So I'm mixing um, paper collections and embellishments here. I, I know this is die cut with a view. I think not sure who this is. I know this is Echo Park, um, but I think actually think this is Echo Park too, but two different collections. So, um, and I, yes, I ink the edges here to help kind of bring stuff together here. Another layout from the 4th of July, and I'm mixing Bella Boulevard and Echo Park and die cuts with a view here, and then just some um, basil embossed cardstock. So just kind of getting some of that stuff done. I love this picture with my granddaughter and grandpa there. Last summer, there was a really, a, a really cool cloud that rolled in as a thunderstorm rolled in which we actually really didn't get any rain from this which was really interesting so took the pictures got them on a very they're very gray and I wanted it to have that feeling so I grabbed this paper which is from Felicity Jane and I used a lot of Felicity Jane on here I think everything is except for the alpha and the doily is Felicity Jane trying to use up my Felicity Jane stash I don't really have that much I've never subscribed I only um only um I have bought like their kits on sale and that kind of stuff. So yes, that is very cool that grandpa does that. So this is a um, two page layout about a gala that I do every year. And I wanted to, these photos were, this was all very dark. Jason Mraz and Raining Jane, who's his opening band, all performed together at the gala. Um, and then so all those photos were really kind of dark. I did not take these but well, I didn't take the only photo I took actually was this one. Um, but it's it, they're very dark. And then you go over here and because we were on the red carpet with one of my friends, it was really, you know, it was very red and bright. And then I have this bright blue and these three photos didn't look great together because we're looking kind of purple as we did a little selfie together. So I used the blingy glittery stuff to pull it together. Pull this is a chamel from um, her new collection and then this is a, a, a Bella Boulevard paper and then um, ended up making my own journaling card because I couldn't find something to use in quite the right um, I didn't I know it wasn't that I it, I wanted gold like gold I didn't bring any of my gold three by four cards <laughs> so I decided to leave some of them home like gold silver I think I left gold and silver and then I pulled out some stuff that I would never probably use on like the, I'll use them but not on the majority of my layouts it's not where I go to like I have some project life cards so I just brought really my LA, LA studio ones although they are all mixed together normally and of course I wanted a gold card so I made it my own with washi tape I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about this foundation it's called this time tomorrow and what they do is they do what are called random acts of kindness they have a website that you can look up this time tomorrow foundation 
And what they do is they, the random acts of kindness, they show up at the door of somebody who has cancer, who has been nominated, and they hand them a check for $3,000 to be used for anything that um, they need to use it for. And it it's just kind of an amazing um, foundation. A really close friend of mine started this based on a song called This Time Tomorrow that he wrote, and it's just blossomed into a nationwide actual charity. You don't have to do anything other than nominate um the person and what they do is then if you're the nominating person they'll contact you because it's a surprise to the person who has cancer they don't um they don't tell you um they don't tell that person that they're coming they usually it's their loved one so i think i've told four or five people about it personally when they've told me that one of their loved ones or somebody they know has cancer and um they've all been gifted racks so you know they have to they have to there has to be a financial need that you can show so um like a close friend of mine had cancer but she had insurance and not that it wasn't a burden but it was a burden that she could handle so i did not nominate her but anybody so again go to this time tomorrow the this time tomorrow foundation and there is a place where you can nominate people there and if you have any questions you can um just leave it on the you know, leave it in the um, description uh, and then I'll, you know, send you some more information. I've done that for actually a couple of followers. So in the meantime, um, hey, uh, Moira joined us. So hey, Moira. Oh my gosh. Yeah, your, your mother, Moira's mom is 92 and she's in, um, uh, she's talking to her. So she, she um, she's in a residence where all visits have been canceled, which is pretty much going on all over the United States. I don't remember if I mentioned this or not. I live in Wisconsin, and over the weekend, our governor canceled school for at minimum three weeks. Um, some of the schools are for that begins. Um, it begins on Wednesday, but most schools are either just going tomorrow or. Um, canceled classes beginning to like they had school on Friday didn't know that they weren't going back and don't have school and um, that's true even of the big university system in Wisconsin right now just because they want to prevent this spread we don't have that many cases but um, there they are and what happened over the weekend is the Milwaukee schools I think we're going to be going until Wednesday they were going to go Monday Tuesday they found out a, te a teacher just tested positive and canceled classes. So I, God bless you guys who are parents and have kids because, oh my gosh, I don't even know what you begin to do. I know that my stepson and daughter-in-law are going to be taking care of another family's kids to enable their parents to work because they can't afford to take, um, in their case, three weeks off at the moment. So anyway, yeah, I was looking at the states, um, you guys, and it's it's spreading pretty fast about that not just the disease, but um, the amount of cancellations. Although I was at Walmart today and it was kind of amazing how many people were there, including a whole heck of a lot of kids. And I know they're not the vulnerable population, but they do spread things. So anyway, so Myra, Myra says they are closed up tight. Yeah, we're, I'm not sure about the libraries like in my area, but I, even our YMCA, which is a um, kind of a funded um, workout place in my town is canceled and you know just just everything is being canceled I will be working however but taking a few extra precautions remember I always take you know keep my room sanitized but I'm going to be really really um, uh, doing that so oh interesting why we're saying that the restaurants um, are are open but they're asking not to fill past 50% capacity. Um, our president was just talking, that was one of the things that he was talking about was supporting our restaurants, but doing it carefully. So interesting. Oh uh, yeah, and Moira's, Moira's gonna be working, but she says they're taking the same precautions because of being a food store, yep. And I think we know how to do it, so it's not as threatening, right? And I'll tell you guys, I have had, I do a vitamin regimen every day um, the last thing I added to it was zinc I wasn't doing zinc because I was taking other things and then one of my clients who does supplements told me 
last week when he saw me that iodine is really important, but you have to be really careful about where it comes from. So if you're going to add that in, talk to somebody who knows about it. I don't have enough confidence. He and I talked about it specifically for me, so I'm not going to pass that along to you. But um, And I also do essential oils, some essential oils all year long, both on my feet at night and in the morning and then also while I sleep I diffuse them so that's kind of mine to try to keep from getting sick I have masks and gloves but at right now I am not going to be using them I don't want to freak my clients out I want them to know that I'm being cautious but I also don't want them to freak out because um I, I, you know my, the likelihood of me getting sick is not as high and if I am it, it's I'm not going to die from it like people who are older will so Anyway, oh, that's a great idea, Moira, to use gloves to handle money. I'm going to have my hands on my clients. I'm going to be having my hands on my clients' hands. So I will be sanitizing um, to, you know, constantly. So anyway, let's go back to the layout. Lots of stuff going on in the world right now, right, guys? And by the way, um, I did, for those of you who were here in the last live, I did get pre-approved for my condo. Yay! So that's really exciting, but guess what? With the state of what's going on in the world right now, and I'm self-employed, there will be no condo purchasing in the immediate future, which I feel bad about because our economy could really use it right now, but I, working for myself, there's no way I'm doing it. But it's just cool to know that I'm pre-approved, and I can just carry that for, you know through. It's a 90-day pre-approval, so once things settle down, I can see how I feel. Anyway, back to the layouts. Um... <laughs> yeah, Renee says, luckily scrapbooking doesn't get canceled. For those of you who are working from home or are not going to be working, I'm a little jelly because uh, you get to scrapbook. So anyway, um, this is a story. This is actually, what happened here is I did this layout and said, wait, where's the photo of my waffles? Realized I forgot to put my photo of the waffles in this. This should have been a two-page layout. It's not. <laughs> so I did this one first about this awesome restaurant called Cup of Joe on Marco Island that has a little um, kind of shabby chic farmhouse kind of style decor, but with crystal chandeliers. <laughs> and we were eating on the porch on, actually they had heaters on because it was a little chilly when I was there. But um, anyway, so I took some pictures of the outside the decor, this fabulous mimosa, which I cannot remember what else was. I think it was strawberry um, juice in there as well. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And um, so did this with, these are um, Maggie Holmes collections here. And it was her, uh, summer collection from last year that I did this and then here's a big used up package things you guys um, Moira it's 70 I did 70 over the course of the weekend so um, I had this um, package of these two Dear Lizzie Cork bows left that have been sitting in my stash for I don't know five years maybe more than that and I had used everything but two they're so big they're hard to use on a layout without letting them take over the layout and I said those are going to be on a layout by the end of the weekend and there it is actually it went on the second day I think I I put these on on the second day so yay me <laughs> and then here's the um layout so it actually goes this one first then this one here's the layout that I did with the waffles so obviously they're not they're companion layouts like I told you but you don't really realize that right but if you look I have things in common so doilies even though they're different doilies there's two doilies as a matter of fact on each of these then there's these wood sequins from I think this is cloud nine on here and then I use the same font for my title as well. So that's one of the ways that you can kind of pull in um, to make things kind of work together. The other thing that I did is notice how there's this light pink. I pulled pink, light pink into this. So I think if you saw them, you know, in the actual progression, it would make a little bit more sense. But think about things like that. They're very different layouts, but they have some commonalities. And that's just my thing. I did it because I thought it would be a little challenge for myself about how can I pull them sort of together without repeating. I didn't have any of that paper left. And um, it might not have been as appropriate but that's how I did it so both of these were Maggie Holmes collections so thanks Renee I think they work really well together too I hope that they land next to each other in the book sometimes they follow you know 
I'll have to flip the page so that the second one lands here. Okay, so second uh, or the next layout is a layout about stone crab in Florida. So now I'm, I'm scrapbooking my Florida vacation. Not everything is done, but it had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. Our Creative Memories consultant, thank you, um, gave us a paper pack and it was this, this yellow and green and a little bit of peachy pink. So I used the the paper here, all three papers, are from that, but then I pulled in that Maggie Holmes Summer Collection for the embellishments. So that was kind of a fun thing. And then this somehow, I don't know what happened, but this fell off of a sticker sheet and I saw it and I'm like, oh, that green's close enough and I put it on the page because I wasn't going to go back and look where, I think this is from a Chamel camera, but anyway, and lots of sunglasses because that's a Calvin Ball was, I don't know if it still is. I haven't looked today at what it, um, what it is, but um, anyway, that was a Calvin Ball thing as well. This is a really cool thing. Um, off the coast of Florida in a place called uh, Cape Romano is this house or what's left of this house. It was a dome home and a hurricane went through and started to destroy the island that this thing was on. And now this is it. And so I have a picture of this from last year when I was there. And it's amazing. These are further underwater or closer to the water than they were last year. So that was kind of a cool thing to see. This is um, some Paige Evans pink paisley paper because it just, I love the colors of this and the water was kind of green around here. So I thought it'd be cool to use kind of a minty aqua paper. And I remember that page had this. So I used that on there again, lots of sunglasses and kind of summery um, theme here. We were on the boat. So that's kind of what the sunglasses and swimsuits and that kind of stuff are there. So some of this stuff is stuff that might not make as much sense to you, but it does to me because it brings back a feeling from when I took the pictures, not just um, going exactly with that theme. Because, you know, I don't know how many dome home um, embellishments they make. <laughs> All right, another two-page layout here. And another one of those where I don't necessarily mirror or even use the same background paper. The commonality here is this green paper here. And if I had thought a little bit better about this, I would have snugged these pictures up close or put the border in these pictures. I didn't think about that until it was too late and I thought, oh well, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, this is um, Paige Evans' Bloom Street collection. This this is, these embellishments um, are from a, her, a couple of her older collections. So anyway, lots of enamel dots on here. These are, I keep a bag of these. I should show you guys this. I don't know if you've seen this, but I keep this bag of embellishments. And when I have um, extra glitter or uh, gold foil pieces left, it's, and this happens a lot at Christmas, I punch stars and hearts and scallops and different sizes. And I just keep this on my desk because then I can just pull them to throw them on to embellish things, which is great. And we had a lot of gold foil it was one of the Calvin Ball things. So I got... Um, credit for all those. I love this paper. I loved it so much. I was like, okay, the first piece of paper I'm using is that one. And I went out and I looked for photos that would work with it. Again, a cool way to be inspired. Instead of being inspired by the photos, I was inspired by the paper and then found the photos to work with that. So just something a little bit different. Um, this is, um, I love this piece too, I should say. I, yeah, I have a hard time telling which, if it's this one or the other one, that's my favorite. But um, I love this picture. This is my mom and I at, um, after we saw Lion King last year. And I just think it's such a funny, my mom kind of looks like she's going forward like like Simba here is. Um, and, you know, me. And I can tell you, um, I had had a shower, but I, I we had to leave so I didn't dry my hair because it's not like it normally is. So that was kind of a fun thing to look at Um Really simple embellishments because I love the paper so much. I wanted the paper to really kind of stand out there. Back here again, um, I think I think these two came later on, but when I ended up storing, that's not the way they happened. But this is a picture of my really close friend that I went to Florida to visit her and her husband. And look at that beautiful seashell paper. You know, I was thinking about this, and you'll see where I did some die cut, some die cutting on my Cricut to get some seashells. Didn't think I had any in my stash, and I pulled out that Maggie Holmes collection because I decided to work with a summer collection because I remembered the colors were kind of like this. And lo and behold, not only was there seashell paper, but there was all sorts of seashell embellishments and sunglasses and on and on and on and on. The other thing I like about this is this is some of that Creative Memories paper that I bought at the um, crop. And I use this to pop that off the background. I mean, it's just like your eye goes totally towards it, even on a really busy um, 
background paper. We were talking about that before with that layout of um, my grandson with the house or the, the kids out on the plate, um, out in their backyard with the houses in the background. So just remember a really dark color is gonna, well, or a really light depending on what the busy background is made up of, but that'll just draw your eye right in because your eye goes, whoa, that's really different. And that's what my eye just said to me. I don't know if your eye talks to you, but mine does. Anyway, um, this, I'm going to cover this because it's political. <laughs> I have a friend who's very proud of this particular flag. So I took a picture of him driving the boat and then this flag. So we won't talk about that. Your politics are your politics. His politics are his politics. My politics are my politics. Whatever. Anyway, um, but I loved it because he's on the boat and I found this sailboat paper. We weren't on a sailboat, but it was kind of fun. Um, and then again, I used some more um, embellishments here from that Maggie Holmes collection. Um, this is a really busy Maggie Holmes paper here. Um, and that is, it's just, it's photographs of kind of beach scenes. And I'm like, what the heck? How am I ever going to use this? I was thinking, I don't even remember what the other side of it looks like. Um, oh, it wasn't. It was from, that's right, because it's from the pad. So I had to use this or just the white side. And I challenged myself to use it. So I grabbed this, um, pink and gold paper to um, go with my drink there. I was having a gin and tonic, which I think Moira and I have discussed before about how she likes those too. Anyway, so I did that and there was a little gold in here. So I started playing off the gold um, and I made my own journaling card here again, because remember I didn't have gold journaling cards, but I could use washi tape to help, um, how, to help me, get the gold card that I was really looking for and then just popped up some more gold embellishments. And I think it, again, I think you really see that photo because the background's kind of receding because your eye is being drawn, especially because this color is very different than anything else. I mean, I have pops of it here, here, and here, but it's, you know, right there, even though this is very um, gray and misty, kind of like the background is gray, but your eye is going right to that yummy cocktail of mine. All right, this is what I was talking about when I decided, um, thanks Moira, um, when I decided that I was going to um, do those pictures, I knew I didn't have shell stuff, except of course now you're seeing all the shell stuff I had, so I did this wreath, shell wreath cut file from Paige Evans from her Etsy shop, which is page by page, so P-A-G-E by P-A-I-G-E, just in case you're wondering. And then um, just kind of played around with some of the embellishments. This and this are um, two of my, uh, two more of my favorite pages that I did. I just love this, this page. It's just, I don't know, it, it feels like Florida to me and the ocean and there's a sailboat in the background here and it just, I don't know, feels light and summery, even though it wasn't summer, springy, I guess, in that particular case. And then um, one of my friends was commenting on this. I took my... Um, uh, la, la, la. my wink of Stella pen and I was going to do just a, a few little shells and by the end I had done all the shells so it just gives your white cut file just a little bit of something I usually cut my cut files in white I don't well I shouldn't say that I go through periods where I'll cut a bunch of them knowing that I'm going to use them like I cut handsome well I've got a great nephew and grandsons I can use the handsome all day long or awesome or exciting or in this case some shells here I did a suitcase um, because I knew that I had these traveling things. So here's my boarding pass. I like to take this photo with me just kind of waiting to get on the plane. So, you know, just kind of all those things. It's a way to collect your memorabilia. And I took my um, Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and I attached all my boarding passes here. Now, I use my phone now, but I always print a boarding pass because if the internet goes down or I have problems with my phone, at least I have one and I don't miss, you know, my plane. All right, so then here's another one that I won this little baking thing at that foundation gala that I was telling you guys about before. And I remembered that a few weeks ago I was going through my paper collections and looking at what was out there and what maybe I could disseminate into my um, my faux solid um, trays and or what I would be inspired to use up. And I saw this paper and then when I saw this baking photo over the weekend, I remembered that I had this paper. And this is older. It's a Pebbles collection that's probably six or seven years old easily. 
And so I went and grabbed that and I realized that this one I put it in got smushed down a little bit. Anyway, and then I didn't know what I was going to do. This is an LA Studio paper. Like I'm like, oh, I could use some washi tape here. And I flipped the remaining part of this over and realized that there's a really cool um, diamond pattern on the back and I used it. So this bake probably needs to come down just a little bit, but it's on there and it's going to stay the way it is. So I don't have a lot of brown letters. Here's another example of, I cut a couple of different ice cream cones because I know I'm going to have ice cream photos. So this again is a Paige Evans cut file there and I had a little bit of fun backing that and I have a folder of um, food things which is basically cupcakes and ice cream, just loose pieces because I take my grandkids for ice cream a lot when they're with me but good ice cream. The story of this though is I have a favorite ice cream store in quote up north which is what we call northern Wisconsin where a lot of us like to vacation if we're from southern Wisconsin and I have a really favorite ice cream shop. It's my favorite ice cream shop and I did not make it to the city that's it that it's in until late fall just because of something going on in my life one weekend I was supposed to go and then the next time something going on in my friend's life that I usually go with. So her husband and their daughter were up the weekend before which is the last weekend the ice cream shop was open and I jokingly said when I saw him the week before I said uh you should just get um a cup of it and put it in my um put it in the freezer for when I'm there the next week and he said what's your favorite flavor and I said chocolate he's like done I thought he was kidding he wasn't so after we were all unpacked we had poured wine and my friend said to me you have to go to the freezer because her my husband and she said his name has left something for you and he left me this fantastic chocolate ice cream which I ate over two days because there was so much of it but what a fun story and a fun memory because he's just a really sweet guy he's very sweet to me so anyway Here's my great nephew who absolutely loves books, so I was very excited that I could use those border strips, and then I just pulled together scraps. That's all this is, is I um, took just a piece of, um, this is a piece of white, like a piece of paper from a paper pad I wasn't going to use, so I just took it and glued it, this on that piece of paper, I guess, is basically what I wanted to explain to you. So I was really excited about that and using some of those LE Studio stickers. And then this, I didn't do as well with these cork arrows as I wanted to. I have a sheet of those Studio Calico arrows that I've had forever. But um, I did use a couple of them on layout, so I'm happy that I got a couple of them done. This is Crepe Paper Maggie Holmes. I've consolidated most of those unless I have a lot of the collection. And so I just found some colors that made me happy. I messed up and I don't remember if, I think it was this one first that I accidentally, when I was inking the edges, got the ink across it. And then I just, just did it in a couple of other places because now it's grungy, right? <laughs> but adding, using some of the sticker sheets and that kind of stuff to add this in. And there's a nice puffy word there because those puffy words were, or puffy stickers are, um, were a Calvin Ball um, idea, inspiration. More crepe paper paper Maggie Holmes um, here. I like taking pictures of my cocktails obviously and um, my friend's place faces the ocean so we get to watch the sunset from their um, condo. It was just really cool so I, I took my glass of white wine so that you could see the, um, the uh, sunset through it and then posted it to Facebook. Don't um, what do I want to say? Don't turn the channel off, but I, yes, there is ice in my white wine. I drink white wine in the summer, but I like it really cold. So my, my white wine gets diluted. If I had a really good white wine, I promise I wouldn't do that with, but yeah, um, this one was uh, okay. And then I have these really cool recollections. Um, this is obviously champagne glasses, but a white wine bottle there. They had some wine stuff in their, um, like in their sticker area. So those are fun. I'm almost through those. I might actually go buy more of those because I have wine often enough that a few little wine um, embellishments will get used up. Um, again, this is crate paper. I don't remember if this is Maggie Holmes or not. This sunset was really cool. The clouds were kind of in the way, but it made it look like angel wings kind of when we were sitting there and watching it. That's what my friend and I were talking about, about how much it looked like angel wings. So, um, that's just what I titled it. Look at this, you guys. Old sassafras letters. How many of you remember those? 
I still have some, not as many as I used to because I've used so many of them up, which is good, right? I'm supposed to use them up, but I'm going to be sad when they're gone, but it was nice. And then this is a really gold alpha here, and I can never use it because it's almost too gold, except it was perfect on this page, and there's another one that I put it on that it just felt really fun and good that I did that. And I'm collaging and layering, lots of layering. When I do Maggie Holmes, it just feels like you have to layer, 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 right? I mean, sometimes I'll do a layout where that's all I do is I take the photo and then I layer all around it, which is really fun. And if you think when you're working with something, if you don't like the way it's looking, keep adding to it. You keep adding to the collage because eventually it will be enough. That is if you can do the more thing. Um, more, I think this is Maggie Holmes here. And here's that other gold. This is, I think, where it started out um, with the gold here. It just, I like the, I like the pink paper, but I love the blue because that sky is so blue, but I needed something between it. So I did the, um, like the yellow, which kind of reminded me of sunshine and then the really gold letters there as well. And then bringing in a lot of that beautiful, but I, that blue is incredible. I love this, love this blue and the sky that day was so beautiful. It was cold. It was only 52 when we were sitting out on the balcony in our pajamas wrapped up in blankets. So I did need, here's a, here's a drink that I took a picture of with the ocean in the background, but was not alcoholic. That's my coffee that morning. All right. So this is, um, more of those ice cream photos that I like to take. So that's my niece and my great nephew there. And he's having his very first ice cream. We went to this really cool place called Betty Ray's in Kansas City. Um, Kansas City, Kansas. If you're ever there, go. It's awesome. And they have a couple of different locations. But like they're all organic. And so, oh my gosh, it was fantastic. So I use, this is a Bella Boulevard paper. But I think the rest of this is all doodle bug stuff. It's, um, these stars are Bella Boulevard, but like doodle bug embellishments and ice cream and um, that kind of stuff. So this was a fun one. I actually did this one this morning. So that was good. This morning, usually on Sundays, I usually do like maybe three layouts and I'm done. Today I did eight. It was, I was like so inspired, but I had to come home so I could, you know, start unpacking and hopefully get this done for you guys. All right. Um, this is more doodle bug. Now I'm in my doodle bug. So Remember I told you guys that you would see kind of the progression. So you saw when I was using Maggie Holmes, I scrapped a book a whole bunch of photos with that, with that and crepe paper. Then I pulled out my doodle bug because this photo inspired me and I kept scrapbooking with the doodle bug. And then you'll see the last collection that I scrapbooked with. So that's kind of how I do it. It's why I'm able to do 70 layouts in a weekend is I don't keep switching out um, collections like for every layout I just find stuff to work with that collection I keep scrapbooking and in general if I'm scrapbooking like a trip obviously um, those things will probably work you know if you pull out a travel collection you can you know scrap your travel pictures or whatever seems appropriate for you so doodle bug I love how punny they are and so a lot of this is from so much pun or one of those versions so we when we were in Kansas City we went to the Hallmark Museum and she loves Maxine so I got a picture of them with Maxine for her and just um, you know, using some of the punny stuff. So stickers and embellishments and washi tape, lots of different washi tapes. Now, did I use anywhere near a full roll of washi? No, but I used different washi. I actually used different washies instead of the same one over and over and over again. And these are some American crafts embellishments that I really needed to get used up. It's from a very old collection, but called Mayberry that I love that collection. So I bought a bunch of it and I need to get them need to get it used so that's that one and there he is again with his books when he was littler um, this is another one I was just when I was doing this I said to my my friend across me I can't believe how little he is in these pictures and it was a year ago you know I saw pictures of him yesterday because he was here in Wisconsin with um, my sister and like you know he's walking down the sidewalk and chattering away to my sister and um, uh, my brother-in-law and it just like they grow so fast right guys um anyway so this is doodlebug here this is this is also doodlebug too just this is so much pun this is from this is what i would call faux salad so i have you know packs of faux salad papers with me you're not packs but you know loose loose there more el studio you saw you've seen a lot of this el studio things just trying to use it up so did doodlebug then I moved on because I saw this photo first but there's a whole group of these that were outside there was a lot of denim blues in them and I remembered that I had um, the indigo hills 2 collection and I don't remember which is which but there's um there and there's a pink fresh studio one too that and I can't remember which is 
pink paisley, which is um, pink fresh, but they both have this sort of bluey feel, indigo and ivy, that's the other. So indigo hills and indigo and ivy, and it just felt really great. So look at guys, there's another frame that I just chopped up and I'm using it as a basis for embellishments. Um, more washi tape, but this time just kind of peeking out. This is a really wide washi tape here that I just let peek out. And look, I've had these green pearls forever. They just sit in my embellishment basket and I haven't used them. It's not even with my regular bling. I don't know why I've allowed that in my scrapbook room. They should go in my bling drawer. But for some reason, I think it's because of the green color and I don't have um, I don't have uh, enamel dots in that color. Because <laughs> I can allow, any, allow, that makes it sound awful. But anyway, I think that's why they are in, um, they're in the they were just in that but I was really happy because I actually used these beautiful um, gold or green pearls here and just kind of bringing in flowers and that kind of stuff now they're outside so there's flowers here yeah I think this is indigo and ivy is a beautiful collection I think indigo and indigo hills has more navies and oranges and purples so you're not I have pieces of that on here but it's not this is indigo and ivy so anyway so here's um, this, this I can tell you is Pink Fresh Studio for sure, I'm pretty sure, because it's got a really, yeah, it definitely is. It's got a really forward feel to it, fashion forward feel, would be the best way I can describe that. So, and again, combining it with Indigo and Ivy, and look, I know my niece is on here, but this is really about him and his fun little giggle. But look, I put flowers on the layout with a boy. Look at that, and there's a little peachy pink, and I got away with it. So anyway, um, love just the way this whole series really looks. So here again, here's pictures of my nephew, great nephew, and I love these photos. I took, um, when we went to visit them in Kansas City, I took these three photos. He was playing in the grass and just laughing and um, running around as much as he could at that time because he was just starting to walk, but um, it it was they're great photos I love them and I love how they are really forward on this layout even though that background paper is a little bit more busy and this is a little more busy and I've got embellishments on here but man you look at this and you see those green photos pop off which is exactly what I wanted to happen with these also you guys know me I'm a really linear scrapbooker right normally I put my three photos in a line well I was just um, kind of getting ready to arrange them and they kind of fell in an arrangement really similar to this I moved it around a little bit to get it on the paper but I was like oh I really like how they look not up in a line here huh I think maybe I'll do that I need to do that more often because I mean they're still pretty symmetrical they're not all exactly this the two photos on the side aren't exactly at the same angle but they're close but just I love the way this turned out one of my favorite layouts from this weekend and last but not least probably my favorite pictures some of my favorite pictures that have ever been taken of me but definitely of me with him so this is when we right after we arrived he had just gotten up from his nap and um, his mama said do you want to go to Auntie Kelly and he held out his hand, hands to me. And I think he saw me when he was seven months old. He was um, not even a year old here. And he held out his hands to me like he wanted to go to me. And he just snuggled up to me and sucked his thumb. And oh my gosh, my heart, my heart, my heart. And my niece took those photos of of me. I didn't even realize at first that she was taking them. I think it, here I, I did realize. So I've got a goopy smile. But here I'm just cuddling him. And um, and she was just like, wow, I can't believe he just went to you like that. Well, when he was seven weeks old, he was a little bit colicky and I went out to visit them. And so I would rub his back and just try to calm him. And she was like, and he would, you know, like he would stop crying and that kind of stuff. And my niece said, wow, how are you doing that? And I said to her, remember, I'm a massage therapist and I calm people all day long all day long every day he can feel that energy and he understands that that's what I'm giving to him you know that's that's what I'm offering to him so I think that's also part of this too is that he recognized that because he in some part of his little brain remembered so anyway another frame another partial frame that I used on um, this and I think that yeah here that was on the other half was on this layout um, and here I was creating this is a banner 
Um, this was a tag, and so I was creating some banners here and some of that kind of stuff to get stuff in. And look, guys, this is a white cardstock background. You don't see that from me very often, but I really wanted those photos to stand out and thought that I could do that by using the white cardstock background. So there you go, guys. That's what a weekend of scrapbooking looks like. I've got another one going on this spring, um, a little bit later this spring, that I will um, definitely do another layout share for you at some point when I get home. But um, thanks for joining me, everybody. And um, I'll be back with another video on Tuesday for sure. In the meantime, everybody stay healthy and um, well. Don't forget to wash your hands. Bye, everybody.